Thank you. I don't know if this will work itself or whether it to work. Um, I think we've actually received more than that, actually, if you look back, because right at the beginning of our time at the Oasis, we received some money to help us to, um, to fund our um, original project. And the, the two grants that we've had since then have been funding individual projects. But um, the... The situation that I was faced with was about 18 years ago, I was asked to take on what was a little church in the middle of a, uh, an ex-mining kind of community uh, called Kilton Estate in Worksop uh, that w had really suffered a lot of deprivation, uh, disadvantage, and was really in a, in a pretty bad state. There was three, three old ladies meeting in a wooden shed, basically, and that was the church that I took on, um, this is a sideline really, and found a community that was so hurting and so um, struggling that I really felt I had to do something more about it. And we spent the next few years, I suppose, trying to build some, um, some foundations in the community. We started with children's work and youth work and various things, but to meet in this little wooden hut was uh, which was freezing in the winter, was cooking in the summer, and had no facilities, was really pretty pathetic, and uh, really didn't serve us very well. And then about 11 years ago, we found a piece of land, it had been a youth club, um, it was derelict, and two acre site uh, um, that was, had been a recreation field, it was just a field of long grass. And so we took on a 25 year lease from the local council, um, 10 years rent free on the understanding that we would try to bring it back into life um, and to renovate the building and landscape the land. Um, that first year I spent writing 2,000 letters and applications and didn't get any replies to most of them and didn't get any funding at all and we really wondered whether we would do anything at all with it. Um, and it was in the second year that we started, I'd never, never got grants before or anything like that, so I was pretty green around the gills with that. But we started to um, receive a little bit of funding and Coalfields was one of the first ones that actually did fund us and did help us with that initial funding package to try to build um, enough money to renovate a building which was totally derelict, no roof, no windows, no anything, and to start our project. And so um, in the next year we raised £250,000 from over 80 different partners and grant funders, but the Colfers was the, one of the first ones that encouraged us in the beginning. And um, that's, it's a, only a small building, it has four, four rooms, um, now it has kitchens and uh, facilities and a hygiene suite and things, but that's how it looked after we'd started the work. It looked worse than that before. We cleaned the, most of the graffiti off and, and put some uh, panels up. But, uh, we had this two acre site which was basically a field of long grass, no fence around it, no trees, and that was the only green space in this community. In this community all the pubs had closed, uh, there was no other projects that were really happening in that part of the area at all for the local people. There was no community heart, no place for them to come together apart from the local school, and there was a real uh, sense of desperation and a lack of hope. And so that's where we started to build our centre. And uh, it took us another year before we uh, finished building. It looked terrible state for a long time. Um, but eventually it started to come together. We landscaped the site and creating a park and gardens for the community. And we brought the community centre into being and uh, began to do our work there. And over the years, we've added projects and programmes um, year by year for people of all ages. Uh, now we provide um, children's work from babies and toddlers uh, through all of the age groups into youth work. Um, we have um, now the only programme for um, children with disabilities and special needs that we offer respite care in the north of the county, well, one of the only ones. And uh, we call that Treasure Kids, and children with disabilities get five hours of respite care, one-to-one -one care, every two uh, 
uh, two weeks or so. Um, we do more children's work here throughout the year, every week and through the summer than anyone else in the, in the local town. And we are, are bringing back to life a community that had lost its heart. Um, these are just some of the, the images of things. We work right through the ages, so we work um, with, with people right through to elderly people with disabilities, um, with dementia, uh, with uh, various needs. So there's lots of specialist groups now. We've got over 30 groups that meet each week. And we have many, many events throughout the year that are just one-off events or regular events that we do. And we can see 10, over 10,000 people um, visit the site annually. Uh, I think we have nearly about 800 people weekly come to uh, so the projects that we have here. And we can have over 1,000 people at one of our events at any one time. And so, as you see, the, the place has now come alive. It's now got a heart to the community. And we've seen a real change in people's outlooks, in people's lives. In, uh, there's a place to belong, a place to come to. The social cohesion of the area has changed. Um, we've got now projects for women, projects for men. A new project starting next year called Men on the Edge in another building to this, which we're just renovating as well. Um, that will uh, give weekly projects every day to men of all ages particularly with different kinds of needs through workshops, drop-in facilities, and sports uh, uh, as, as well. We do lots of employment training and life skills training, and that's where coalfields have been absolutely brilliant from the, the um, original grant that we had, but also the grants that we've had through the years. Coalfields has been there giving advice, giving us incredible facts and figures that have not just helped with their grant funding, but with all the grant funding that we've had because I've used those in many, many applications to be able to back up what uh, we're saying about the area. So Coalfields has been brilliant for that. And again, Lynn and Alison and, um, and Steve have been brilliant all the way through with their advice and their encouragement. Um, and uh, they're always, always available to you and uh, sometimes brighten your day with a smile and a, a merry quip as well. So that's always great. But uh, they've really helped us to um, to, to work on, particularly on the garden side of things. So we now have lots of enterprises in our garden work. Um, we do employment training through gardening. We've got Gardening for Life, uh, where people come and they grow um, vegetables and fruits and plants, and we sell them to the local community and to, uh, to other outlets as well. So it's a good enterprise. And people learn skills. We've got people into the local council parks department into work. Um, we've got many people into volunteering. At the moment we have about 35 sessional workers and we have over 80 volunteers working in our programs uh, in different ways. And uh, that increases year on year. We've won lots of awards over the years as the site has, uh, has become a, really, a real oasis. It's a, a lovely garden now. Um, it's a park for the local community that's open 365 days a year. Uh, but it also is um, a very tranquil place, a place where people come and they enjoy the therapeutic sort of aspects, going backwards now, therapeutic aspects of, uh, of it. But um, we've had the privilege of, of some of these awards uh, has given a real pride to the community. This year we were um, on BBC Gardener's World, um, a little snippet which was about the difference a community garden makes to a local community. And um, the amount of people that saw that, we've doubled our number of garden volunteers uh, just in the last six months. And um, uh, everywhere we go, people say, oh, you were that program there. So uh, it, it's amazing that's, that just a few minutes of airtime did us a, a, a lot of good there. But it's, it's made a difference to the people that are involved because they feel a real sense of pride in a community that had lost, lost its heart. It now has a heart. It has a pride. It has a reason to be there. People want to come and live in our community now. Um, and um, I'm sure that those houses which are um, you know, on the market, the prices will have gone up. And I think the, the level of deprivation will have, will, will have, have, got, have risen, I don't quite how to put it, but it will be better than it was when we came because there's so much now available to the local community. We have um, Flowers for Life. We grow cut flowers. We um, teach people how to, how to grow them, 
from seed, from bulbs, then we, throughout the whole year, we do floristry work. Um, so we teach people how to do floristry, to make bunches and bouquets and wedding flowers and all that kind of thing. So it's teaching them different kinds of skills. And uh, we've uh, had lots of different unexpected enterprises. We, we grow cactus because of the, I don't know if we've got the picture there, but we've got a greenhouse that's a like, kind of dome greenhouse that only grows things that need a lot of heat. So we end up growing thousands of cacti and uh, they, they are sold for the, the project as well. Um, we collect all the seeds, that's another project, Seeds for Life, and we make seed packets which we again sell to the local community and beyond as well. So it's got lots of spin-offs. Last year we planted a licorice garden, licorice was the heritage crop of Worksop and Pontifract as well, two places um, uh, which uh, no longer have that uh, as a, a crop. Um, but we've got the first licorice garden in works up for a hundred years and we've brought that back to life. So there's another reason to come to our centre to see licorice growing. Um, the main thing is that throughout all of uh, our projects, um, it's bringing people together. The social cohesion uh, is, is brilliant on the site. People feel a sense of belonging, a sense that they're part of a family, a sense that they can make a difference to others around them. And whoever they are, we are um, giving them value in their lives. And they, they feel a part of the whole of the community. So it's really brought back life to a forgotten and overlooked community, which was in that way partly because of the coalfields, largely because of the coalfields' demise. Uh, and um, that's recognised by all. But we're making a difference. We now have the, the opportunity to purchase the land and the buildings that we're on, which will uh, preserve it for the local community if we can raise the money. So we, we, the council have already given us 20,000 and we just have 100,000 to raise just <laughs> this year. Um, we've also been given 25,000 for play equipment, new play equipment for the gardens, um, as the, the rest is 10 years old. And so we're going to renew it and improve it. And so uh, we need to double that amount of money. Um, we've got a new curiosity project starting with children in need over three years. Funding is in place for that, which is all about bringing science to children's lives to make a difference to them. Um, a lot of that will be uh, in the area of, dis of disadvantage and disability. Uh, the Men on the Edge project will start in January. Uh, the Edge building will open in January. We've had a makeover from a local company. They've put a new kitchen in, a new boiler and all sorts of things in what was a very old building. Um, and that will open in January uh, for an, a whole range of new projects. Um, lots of new events for the community. As I say, we do com community events all through the seasons. So we have a great spring event when all the flowers are out. Next year, our gardens are open three, on three occasions for the National Gardens Trust, which is a, a charity thing that happens throughout the year. Um, we um, have a great summer gala uh, with this year we had a, um, two, two big galas in the summer, in fact, and we had a, a great big circus marquee put on the, uh, the, the field there. Uh, and we had a range of events across the week, which was absolutely brilliant, including the, the local veterans um, annual tea, which brought 250 veterans all together. And we provided uh, a meal for them and entertainment for them. And we go right through, recently we just had fire, a fireworks and food event where there was over 800 people there. And then at Christmas we will have a Christmas festival uh, where the community will come together for that. So it's bringing the community, it's a very small and localised community compared with some of the projects that you've heard of today. But it's making a difference to the people on the, on the streets of our community. And uh, it's changing their lives one by one, one person at a time, whether they be a child or an adult or someone who's elderly, every person's important. Their life matters to us and, uh, and we're making a difference wherever we can. And being an oasis in a, a pretty desert place um, that can bring life where, where we are. So thank you for listening and thank you to Coalfields for their great support and help.